Yes, right. today, today, today is March the 31st, 30, 1st. 2022. Yeah. My, name is, my name is Skip Weber. I'm interviewing Donald Sharp, 92 years old. This is part two. We did yeah, an interview edition. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're picking up where we left off about the Sharps coming down from Kentucky yeah. down to the North Shore of um, Lake Pontchartrain in St. Tammany Parish in the Florida parishes of Louisiana. Okay. All right, this, uh, we want, we're still sticking to the um, uh, important point of how the Sharps got down here in Louisiana. And I'm gonna take if one of my volumes, I had some of the paper in there, this is volume two. Uh, oh, and um, we'll get into, they came down two ways, and we're gonna have a map to show you. Uh, uh, Joseph, George Sharp, the first one to get down here, a young man uh, who uh, the family, Sharp family, settled at Jackstown near Sharpsburg, Kentucky, close to Boonesboro. Uh, he found out that they were getting ready to make a trip down to New Orleans by flatboats. The man's name was John Holly. And in his journal, they make two trips. Uh, he has in there, one was 1789 and one was 1791. Uh, George, I think, was around 21, 22. You had to be 25 under the Spanish to be called an adult. But anyway, he went down the first trip and then uh, they were so successful that John Holly made us uh, got together for a second trip, and the second trip was in uh, 1791. And when they got there to New Orleans, uh, it was either the first or the second trip. New Orleans had two fires, two big fires. One was in 1789 uh, or 88. You'll have to look that up. But I think it's 1788. Yeah, they um, uh, half the town burned down, and then they had it uh, four years later. It had another fire. But anyway, on one of these trips, I think it was the last trip. They landing at the levee, and they noticed all these tents on the levee, and all these people living there. They found out from the governor Miro that half the town and Jack, the, they didn't have Jackson Square at that time, but the cathedral burned, the church burned, uh, uh, and half the wooden houses. From that, uh, uh, John Holly uh, became good friends with this, uh, Miro, and he had food besides the tobacco crops. They had hams and uh, 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 vegetables, things that he brought down. So he let them have that at a reasonable price. And the governor was so appreciative that uh, when George Sharp said he'd like to get a land grant down here, the governor gave him a grant across the lake, a ba abandoned British uh, uh, land grants from the Revolutionary War. And uh, we have it on the map there. It, uh, uh, his friend uh, Zachariah Fackhorst was with him on his second trip. And in seven end of 1791, December, they started living uh, on Upper Bayou Castan on North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain. But anyway, we'll get into this. This is very interesting. But uh, let's see. This is the property that he had, they had. It was 600 and something acres, and as you can see, it was along Upper Bayou Castan. So, this is right here in pink. Right, this is Bayou Castan. Yeah. This is Lake Pontchartrain. Well, yeah, later on, other shops are gonna get in by marrying in the spell. And Zachariah Faircloth, who get this, was with um, uh, George Sharp. They were best of friends. And uh, Zachariah later uh, marries uh, into the family of, uh, of the Richardsons, which uh, 
uh, Joseph Sharp, the uh, younger brother of uh, George Sharp, uh, married into. But anyway, this is the first instance where Sharp was on territory on the shore. This was a original British property, land grants all over here. Can you and everything. point out where the causeway might be today? Causeway came right through Zacharias right here, where this dotted line is. Mm -hmm. It comes right up Zachariah Fairclaw's property. Mm -hmm. This is Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. But we'll get at it. There's a map here we'll show you in a minute. But anyway, that's the first property. Now, in, uh, uh, the first um, mm. session we had, video session, is all typed up here. And it, it goes exactly the way I said it. The only thing we have to add some little things that we'll miss. One, we said that Joseph Sharp, the younger brother, was killed over on the Chick Tick River uh, in 1805 by William Flanagan. Uh, Joseph Sharp. In those days, they didn't have public schools, but he started uh, a little school for the uh, settlers in the area, uh, which is T uh, St. Helena Parish. And the Tickfaw runs all the way down to, um, uh, I think, uh, Lake Marapa, all the way up uh, to the Mississippi line. But anyway, uh, After George Sharp was, uh, uh, Joseph was killed, what ha William, a few years later, went down to live with his uncle, Zachariah Faircloth and Martha Richardson. What happened to the family of um, Joseph Sharp? Uh, his wife, uh, Richardson, uh, it's, it's all in here. Uh, she remarried to a, um, the, they, uh, he had two sons and a daughter. The daughter's name, I think, was Patsy. And Patsy married a, um, a Reuben Mayfield, and the other married a Sticker. But anyway, we have um, we have the the uh, type uh, uh, papers that which uh, was in the first first edition. Now. Let's get to how they how they got down here. Both boys. Uh, I gotta watch this. They came from Kentucky, and uh, if you be, bear with me for a minute. This is the properties that they got into Mandeville later on. As Zachariah, this is uh, where uh, George Sharp was. He stayed a few years, four or five years, sold it to Zachariah, and then he went back up to uh, Kentucky. Zachariah lived here for a few years. Storms came in 1801, 1802. He was driven out. He had to live with these people over here, Castagoos and... He lived with her. But anyway, Zachariah uh, 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 Faircloth uh, met uh, Martha Richardson, the daughter of George Richardson, and he, uh, they lived together and they were married and they became part of our family. But um, Joseph uh, uh, Sharp, the son of the one who was murdered in St. Helena, uh, he uh, he got some 200 acres from Zachariah. Uh, William Sharp, uh, later on, he was on this property. He moved up to, to uh, the Bocchetta River, or a, a branch of the Tick Fall. But anyway, I have a map here that shows how the both boys got here. Here we go. And you probably want to see this. We'll get into this. Oops. Let's see which is the best side. They're both about the same. Let's go over here.
This is from Howard Tilton Library, Tulane University. I've got this. George Sharp came down. There's Boonesboro. This is Captain John Holly kept this journal. Four flatboats. They got to uh, uh, the Kentucky River, Ohio River, down to the Mississippi River down there, and they came down to New Orleans. They'd go back up the trail. They'd cross the lake, buy uh, horses from the Spells or whoever's living on the North Shore for pack horses and walk back up and get back up to Kentucky. Now later, uh, after uh, George was down here a few years, his brothers, three of his brothers, left by pack horses to come down. By the way, uh, we, had, we found out that it, uh, from this will and so forth that George Sharp had not only his younger brother Joseph, but uh, Stephen uh, uh, Sharp and uh, uh, Vincent Sharp were part of, uh, that was his younger brother. But anyway, they came down to Natchez Trace. One came this way, the other boys came down this way. And they settled right at Coles Creek. Okay. So they, part of the family came, uh, George came down by flatboat, two trips. And the younger brothers came down by pack horse. But anyway, this is the journal it's in the University of Kentucky. Oh, who was John Holly? Uh, uh, editor up there sent me uh, clippings back uh, from the newspaper. It started in 1787. General Wilkerson came down in 1787 and made an agreement with Governor Miro that he could bring down flatboats. These, these are the instruments they use. Now remember that um, George Sharp, older brother of the uh, Joseph, was in charge of one of the flatboats. We got another part to the paper there where he's buried and all that. This is Holly. John Holly bought, okay. And he, they were uh, uh, very close to the Boones, the Boonesboro and all that in there. The Sharps actually married into uh, a family, George, that uh, was related to the uh, Daniel Boone and his family. And here's where he's buried. There's a lady there standing there by the, in the graves. I forgot the year. I have it written down. I guess you could write up to the University of Kentucky and they probably have the new, newspaper article that you get the here it is right here. The, well, this is the journal. You can see it better. It's hard to read because of his handwriting and the dates. But it, it takes a long time. To, you can see how the, the handwriting was. But this is the first sharp that came down from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. And Tell me, was, give me instructions. That, was, that was Joseph William Sharp, born 1794 in Kentucky, right? I don't. I didn't have the date when he was born. How did uh, you get 1794? Well, that's. Oh, he, oh, 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 the one that yeah, in yeah. Bourbon County. Yeah. Oh, the junior. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And his father was James. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he had this younger brother, William. But after uh, Joseph was killed by Flanagan, 
I don't know how they knew about their relative George Living and Zachariah. They knew about Zachariah because of they were related now through the Richardsons. Zachariah married Martha Richardson, the daughter of George Richardson. There was uh, three girls, Martha, Elizabeth, and Nancy. Nancy married Sticker, who was living right there at, uh, at uh, Mandeville. Now remember that uh, uh, Zachariah Faircloth was a loyalist. Right. And, uh, uh, but the loyalists pulled some things in Georgia that the settlers never forgot. And when they had this revolt in 1810, uh, one of the principals who was a loyalist in, in Georgia had captured some of the uh, colonials and it had a 12 year or 14 year old boy with these 10 people they captured. And the mother pleaded with them, let him go. But this, uh, this I'm trying to think of his names in there, but um, he was the leader of them. And he said, no, and he hung the boy. Uh, he settled a little west of the Chifuncta River. And when the revolt was finished and they attacked Springfield, coming down from Baton Rouge on horses and the, the story of it. And then a group of them got together and came over towards Mandeville and found this uh, ex-loyalist who was living there. They killed him, uh, destroyed his house and everything. But there were other loyalists living in the area. They, they came and they got out and they settled here. There were three or four of families. Zachariah was one. I don't think he was in, in the fighting. But anyway, when the gunboats came in 1806 and they were here till 1823, but at uh, about 1810, uh, 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 Lieutenant uh, um, George Merrill was in a gunboat, number 25, and he was across the lake they were raising the flag in Baton Rouge, uh, Governor Claiborne, and Captain John Shaw was with him with the uh, gunboat. Shaw came back to New Orleans and he got a letter from uh, uh, Zachariah, uh, from uh, 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 George Merrill saying, hey, Captain, there's a lot of fighting going on over here because of one loyalist was killed and they're shooting and, you know, uh, Captain Shaw wrote back to Lieutenant Merrill, who was in Mandeville, uh, Madisonville at the time. He says, look, this land is United States land now, and you're an officer of the United States. If someone asks you for mission to, for help or safety, you're to uh, give them that and put that, that fighting down. Well, Joe, Lieutenant Merrill, in one of his gunboats, he had 32 men with sabers, guns, ready to fight so he says okay and he went on he went back and he put it down i don't know how much zachariah was involved in it but anyway he put the fighting down and these guys went back to baton rouge and so forth like that and then he raised a flag june uh, it was january the 7th or something like that he raised a flag at madisonville for the first time second the first time was in baton rouge in december the 10th, 18th, with Claiborne. But anyway, this was the Loyalists. So a bunch of them settled on the Chifuncta River. And Zachariah was one of them. Zachariah came down here to get away because after the war, you had to be well known or something. But if you were Loyalists, people would take it, you know, your life was in danger. So a lot of them cleared out, went to Canada. Kentucky, Bahamas, the yeah, Bahamas, and so forth. But anyway, so Zachariah and George were good friends. They came down by flatboat, and it's documented by John Halley how he got here. Now, his two brothers, oh, we found out there's a will. Uh, 
uh, in Paris, Bourbon County, and Paris is the county seat. Uh, a nurse gave it Kentucky. to me years ago, and uh, uh, they were married into the uh, Harrods, who were married into the Boons and so forth. But anyway, she said, here, I found this will. And this will said that uh, she is the wife, the widow of a James Sharp. And uh, uh, his father was a James Sharp. This is the time they came from Belfast, Northern Ireland, into Pennsylvania, the Scottish enclosure of the people there. But uh, uh, so um, uh, I'm going to get getting off track. But anyway, uh, she says, I don't know what, where my sons are. I'm very old. And I don't know if they're alive or dead. A few of them were still with us, like I was getting. But they had George, they had Joseph, they had James, and they had Stephen, and they had Vincent. I think they were five, six, maybe six, and they had two or three daughters, girls. But anyway, so these three boys, uh, Joseph, uh, Stephen and James get horses, pack horses. They didn't go come down by flat boat. As you saw on the map, they came down the Natchez Trace. And in 1790, it was around 1792 they came down because he got married to the Richardsons, I think, uh, in 1794 or something like that. They, well, he, we had the son born in 1790, so he had to be married before that time. But anyway, uh, before they got down, they started down the trail. Stephen found it, he liked it, in northern Tennessee, right below Kentucky. And I read a story just recently about the descendants of Stephen Sharp. Mm. So other to James and Joseph come down. They get along the trail and they see a place they're filling up quickly called Coles Creek. And that's, they have a lot of history on that. It must have been pretty and then, you know, and so forth. But the Spanish were now getting a little touchy. There were too many Americans coming in and they didn't have that many settlers there. So they had orders to try to stop them. So they start putting in these laws Oh, you, you can't get a grant until four years. It won't, you know, you, uh, you have to have your children. Uh, you have to be working and so forth. You have to live on the land and your children have to grow up. That was the sticker. They grow up in the Catholic church. So after a few years, uh, Joseph Sharp, who had two, two kids at the time, he had Joe, a little Joseph Jr. who takes, comes into the picture. He starts down the trail and he gets into northern Louisiana, which was called, uh, uh, um, not, it was, uh, the, the parishes there. It was uh, the Florida parishes. Huh? The Florida parishes. Yeah, the Florida parishes. I was trying to think, but anyway. The far, Florida. The yeah, Spanish, but the, the uh, Spanish. Not north of uh, Livingston is the. Uh, the parish there, but anyway. Washington or St. Helena? Yeah, but he gets into the parish and he goes to Little River Creek, a branch of the Tickfall, and he builds his cabin. It could have been 1800 because he sells his land back in Coles Creek, I have that, uh, to a person in 1799. So he comes down here, it's either 1800, 1801, and he builds this little cabin, and he makes a living by whatever they all do, but he also became a school teacher. And he took in children from a dozen or so around that were settling in there. They would agree to keep the kids during the winter, and he would, okay. But one of them, uh, William Flanagan, decided he wanted to go back, and he was, he, he was a constantly drunk troublemaker. He wanted to take his girl or two girls out and go back. And so anyway, so uh, uh, Joseph Sr. gets killed. James was with him. James had a property right next to him. After Joseph was killed, uh, Joseph Jr. turns up in Mandeville. He says, I was a young boy, about 10 years old, 11 years old when I came there. 
and he lives with Zachariah, who got to be part of the family by marrying into the Richardsons. Uh, James, after Joseph disappears, he, he had a plan to, uh, a grant in St. John the Baptist Park. I think he, like uh, George, probably went back up to Kentucky. But anyway, the, here's a widow with a daughter, Patsy, uh, William still with her, and one son goes to live in Mandeville with Zachariah. It wasn't Mandeville at the time, it was just, it was called Bayou Chinchuba, Alligator Bayou, in between Bayou uh, Cassan and Bayou Chinchuba, as you can see on the map. And then the story builds up, uh, uh, he grows up and he meets the daughter of John Sharp, they were, Thomas Spell and John, they were brothers of the original Spell Grands. Uh, John Sharp married a Sarah Westcott. Her father was a Tama Westcott, who was the first settler on the Meat River by Denham Springs. But the war uh, and uh, uh, the raiders from the uh, north, uh, the colonial raiders, uh, raided and burned their plantations. They went over to Galveston, Galveston and formed this town there. John Sharp went over there and met uh, Sarah Westcott, married her, and started having children. They had a daughter called Sarah Sally, which Joseph married. Uh, David Bannister Morgan, the general, uh, second in command, of the Battle of New Orleans on the West Bank was a justice of peace, married him in 1816. His mother came down with Patsy, and in 1818, she remarries. And also Patsy remarries. I have the names in there. And one of them goes to Washington Parish, and another one goes over to the Pearl River. So this is the family, what happened to Joseph Shore. Uh, uh, Patsy was married Reuben Mayfield, and you can see the names in there up in Washington Parish. Now, where were we? Okay. So, uh, Joseph is growing up. He gets married. The mother remarries, comes down. They get a lot over in Madisonville. The Bayhams are cut up their property and were selling lots. Um, I forget, 18... Uh, uh, after 1814, 1818, she would, they bought a lot there. They sold it, moved up to Covent, then they moved up to Washington Parish. Um, but then uh, 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 Joseph now settles down. His mother-in-law was uh, uh, Sarah. She dies, and by the way, uh, uh, I don't know what, I forgot. The, but anyway, John, by 18, uh, 1816, was living alone. He was uh, uh, the father, father-in-law. And on the map, you can see this big land grant that he bought from another guy in Mandeville, John Sharp. Uh, in here, we have the signatures of uh, the uh, uh, ancestors of John Sharp and uh, 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 of uh, John Spell, his son and John Sharp, whose uh, wife was Sarah, and they're selling it to Marity. So this big uh, thousand acres there, it goes to Marity. Uh, the Sharps were involved. Now his brother later on came down and uh, he got married to a daughter of Thomas Spell, Nancy Spell. And they were living right next to Zachariah but when this court case started, they found out that it wasn't the Spell's land, it was uh, disputed land, Zachariah got it through the U.S. government. So they pull up, Nancy Spell, William Sharp, you have the big chart, and they go up to the Bogchetta River, and it was open air, and they got a big grant. They put a chapel, he started having kids, uh, uh, he had 10 kids, and you have the big chart on it. Uh, but we found out uh, through that little article you had that it was uh, 
Joseph was starting to have trouble after his wife died in 1850. Uh, 1850. Three years later, there was a yellow fever, biggest in New Orleans, where I think two or 3,000 people died. They were out in the streets and everything. It got across the lake. Three of his families died, uh, a couple of girls and a son. And one of them, uh, I think one or two of them married into the strains. So that's why back then they were called the cemetery, Sharp Spell Strain Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It changed hands, but for 60 years, it was a sharp spell strain cemetery. But anyway, then the war breaks out. And you have that article how they don't tell you much, but they do say about these uh, excursions that the Union troops would go there. And uh, most of the people were, law, uh, were uh, 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 Southerners and everything, and they destroyed their cattle kill their cattle, uh, uh, burn their houses and everything. So I, I imagine that uh, uh, Joseph Sharp, one of the leading citizens of, of uh, what was in Mandeville, suffered too. Where he went and how he hid, I don't know. But he was old, uh, uh, 65, 63, and four years to that or six years to that. And he was close to 70. But uh, the war is over, 1865. He has, I don't know how he lived. He had a few sons with him, Marshall and, uh, but uh, of the 10 he had, three of them were dead, three of them, and, and a couple of them married and moved away and so forth. But uh, he must have, uh, it must have been terrible the last few years of his life. But anyway, my, uh, 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 this, uh, this, uh, ancestors came from one of the sons called Marshall. Uh, they call him Marshall Jackson, I guess, uh, because of named after uh, 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 General Jackson of the Battle of New Orleans. Remember, uh, the uh, War of 1812 was very important to him because uh, uh, he was still a young man, but he didn't fight it. Now the spells fought in the Battle of New Orleans. But uh, he got married right after that by uh, the General Jackson. He was a Justice of the Peace. Now, I want to show you some of the pictures in here. You have a writing now. You have how they got down from Boonesboro. Mm -hmm. One of them came down, George. The other three came sorted down by Pack Horse. Mm -hmm. Joseph. James and Stephen. Mm -hmm. Stephen didn't make it down. He stopped around the Tennessee border there in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. The other two came down opposite Natchez. There's a place called Coles Creek. Joseph uh, and James stayed there for a little bit. Joseph got married. He met George Richardson and his family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the Spanish were passing laws to try to stop the flood of coming down. And for whatever reason, he left the Spanish territory and he, uh, St. Helena, anyway, he came down there and he uh, went into the parishes of what called the Spanish West Florida. Mm -hmm. And he settled on a creek. Oh, he was there a little bit as a teacher and a man called Alexander Bookter who came from Carolina in 1798, and he settled on the, uh, right there what is uh, a place called today's Springfield. The Spanish named him Alcalati, the sheriff and so forth. But he was getting set up and everything. Three years he'd been there, but he was building a cabin for his nephew, me. Uh, but anyway, he invited Joseph Sharp, the school teacher, to come down from St. Helena, I think I did that, the Northern Parish, and witness a log rolling contest. So George comes down the trail by horse or whatever it is, 
but there were six men that came in from, uh, uh, it's, this is in the Spanish West Florida archives too. Uh, Gabriel Burroughs, a me, uh, tough guy, real tough. And they fought in those days, they were all tough. Uh, he was raised by Indians. But he came down with five other companions. They heard about the log rolling. And right away, he got in a fight with Joseph Sharp, but they separated in that. Uh, but then he was after the nephew of Alexander Buchter. And uh, uh, he, the nephew got too close to the door and Burroughs dragged him out. They were biting each other's fingers off, biting their ears, trying to guide. They, when they were fought in those days, it wasn't the Queensberry rules. I mean, anything goes, and they use their teeth and mouth, too. But anyway, uh, of course, uh, his, uh, I think his name was Minx, John Minx. But anyway, he was in bad condition. Sharp was part of this. We know it. That was around 1801. But so he went back up, and he was, for three or four years, he lived there. He was doing his duty and living there until he got killed. And he's buried somewhere along a creek up there, a, a branch uh, up in that parish up there, north of Livingston Parish. And, uh, but anyway, his son got to uh, Mandeville, got in with the Spells. He married the daughter of John Spell, who married a Westcott over in, in Gonzales, and then he came back. Uh, old Spell uh, died, John died, and also uh, Thomas died in 1815, uh, too. His brother, younger brother, William, married Nancy Spell. So they were involved, really involved with the Spell family. And uh, after uh, uh, a certain period of time, we have uh, Judge Joshua Lewis coming over, trying to, uh, he bought a big plantation right close by there. Marini, who was successful in establishing a suburb in New Orleans, and he had a lot of money, decided uh, people, of course, the, 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 uh, the, the disease. You remember I said 1853? Well, they were having these uh, 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 spells and disease uh, epidemics of every other year mm -hmm. and people would die there was no they didn't know what caused it. yellow fever so anyway uh, Marini said and he had a plantation over there he bought uh, and then he said he decided to start a, 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 a town so he starts buying up the land and a lot of the land he the widow Zachariah Faircloth Letch, she married again Letchworth but he bought that land he bought John Spell's land. He bought uh, uh, Thomas Spell's land. Uh, so the, the Sharps were really involved in Mandeville and how it became there. But like I said, uh, even though he had he had a large family, uh, a lot of them died before he died. And uh, now, do you have any questions? Pointed questions that you want to ask me about the Sharps or the Spells. A lot of this uh, stories I got from a man called uh, uh, Edgar Sharp. Mm -hmm. They call him the old pelican. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why, I said, Edgar, why are you called the old pelican? And he, said, and he had a crackling voice and could tell these stories will make you laugh. He said, I was down at the beach here and I was bending over to get the uh, oysters or what. And my friend a block away saw me at the beach, and he came over, he says, Edgar, he says, I saw, he said, you look like an old pelican there bending over. <laughs> and Edgar said, it's stuck, so <laughs> I'm, I'm called the old, and Edgar was a, sort of the early historian mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, Paredes and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the early history of mm -hmm. Mandeville. Was and, he... Uh, he Edgar? died just in uh, 1970s. Nine, was he, seven. Was he uh, Joe Bill's son? Uh, he was the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, he? no, it was a grandson of Joe Bill, right? I don't oh. know. No, because I, I don't know, because Joe Bill was my great grandfather. Okay, what I, I want to tell you another story. I said, Edgar, how did this 
Shop Road goes from the causeway all the way through to the road that goes up uh, to uh, Abita Springs or something on mm -hmm. that. And it's the longest road across Mandeville. And I said, uh, how did he get his name? He says, well, my father moved back from the Mississippi coast and he was living there and it was the woods and everything and a gravel road, a gravel road there through there. And uh, a lot of people didn't know where he lived. So he got a, a wood, wooden boards out and everything and he painted Sharp Road. And he took it out and he stuck it in the road going to going Covington, Sharp Road. Uh, a couple of con uh, uh, aldermen or something for Mandeville wanted to change it later, but Edgar was uh, one of the uh, uh, representatives at the time. But anyway, they turned it down. They wanted to name it for somebody else. But it was officially by the councilor named Sharp Road, and that's how it <laughs> no stayed. Kidding. Do you have any more information on James and his father James, father of Joseph? Uh, you know, I understand. Yeah, well, I tell you, I jumped up, and you go into uh, the migration of the Scottish. It started around 1717. And why they were moving, not only was it attractive, of course you got uh, uh, Pennsylvania, and he dealt with the Indians and bought a big thing, and the Quaker and all that. But it was, they, stories were coming back about beautiful land. You could own your land. And your, why was it so attractive? Only the nobles could own land back there. And people were, as they multiplied, they wanted to own it. They were also fighting. There's a lot of wars, there's religious wars and things like that. And like I said, Sharps, they did have S-H-A-R-O-P that were English. Mm -hmm. They did have a German called Sharp that went in Maryland, changed it to Sharp. But these were Scotch-Irish. And they came down, they landed in Pennsylvania, and they came down that wilderness road. They were three brothers. There was a stories there i read someplace that the uh, they had three brothers that came on but there's still to find out do they have manifests from these ships that they came i'm guessing about 1730. they landed in philadelphia and they went to uh with the name of the where all the scottish were lancaster lancaster yeah but one of them decided he married, he decided to stay there was Joseph. His name was Joseph. He went a few years later, he was making, he got into the whiskey business. Uh, the colonies won their independence. They were each separate colonies. But uh, Washington and the, the, the representatives decided to start taxing the whiskey business. They went up, a, it's called the Whiskey Revolt. Whiskey and Rebellion. Washington sent an army yeah. now. But one of the leaders was jo Joseph Shore. Hmm. Now the other two, I know one was James, but I don't know because of Moses Sharp and, and Sharpsburg. Sharpsburg, we have the history of Moses Sharp, but they don't say anything about James. So after teaching in Germany, I got my Volkswagen up in New York, came down and I, I have it in right in a book there and I visited one of these guys who was a historian he was, in, he was in his 60s he says Donald he says he knew about Moses and all that he says the James Sharps settle about 20 miles away called Jackstown he said it's disappeared it became a African-American community later and then disappeared but they were spreading out. But he says, that was our shops. And uh, from this will, and from that story about Jackstown, that and, well, I know they came from Belfast, but looking into Belfast, you're gonna have, because they got all these big, Ulster County was big, and a lot of people left it, you know. And they got these companies, the difference that everybody wants to know where their ancestors came from. So, but I, uh, 
and then I jumped over to Scotland, where the Sharps, well, they had a famous Sharp there called James Sharp, who was the Archbishop, but they were under the Stuarts, and you have to get into the history of the Stuarts, mm -hmm. and they were on the Isle of Bute, and they were fighting. People would kill each other because one was a Protestant, one was a Catholic. Of course, you know the religion, uh, Edward VIII, he got out of the Catholic religion and so forth. So there was a lot of turmoil there which made these people not only wish to own their own land, but to get away from the fighting. So all I have right now is three brothers took a ship from Belfast, but it's there someplace, but you're gonna have a tremendous amount Somebody up there in Belfast has it down, you know, about the Sharps. And then from there, you have to go to Scotland. Back in Scotland, it goes back to 1000, 900, how the Sharps were, mm -hmm. Sharps Spear or something, then he right, got that right, name. Right. But they're Scotch Irish. Yeah. Of course, I'm mixture with French and German. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, you know now that uh, they came down, uh, they got down the Wilderness Trail and settled down. All of a sudden, the war started. And two of the Sharps I, I read in some of the play, they were scouts. And they would scout out and see where, you know, on horseback. And after the war, they moved over to Kentucky. Now, where Moses, Moses could be the son of one of those, and James and Sharpsburg, he started Sharpsburg. But Sharpsburg's not ours. But anyway, I'm up in uh, uh, up by uh, in Folsom up there, and somebody told me about it's on your chart, I think William, and it's Morgani. You told me and about it. I went it. to see her and you know, a gal in old, you know, dress, yeah. and they had three or four kids with them, eight, ten, twelve. They some two of them had red hair and all that, and I said, Aunt Morgani, how do you know we came from? Uh, I knew because I was told we came down from Kentucky and where, uh, you know, and I said, okay, okay. But I never went into that. Now, William had a big family and you have the chart on it. William Fritz. Nobody's gotten this far so far, mm -hmm. but it took me 60 years. Well, I'm taking it further. Thanks okay, to, I'm thanks passing to your, the baton. Yeah. Thanks to your DNA, I again say thank you for letting well, me share it with other people. I didn't, uh, yeah, the, yeah I, I, I got a little frustrated, uh, but you you told me now, what, well, it's cut off, huh? Okay, I'll turn it off now. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. No, well, no wait, we, we're not through, no. but don't uh, leave it off. Um, turn it off? Uh, I just want to see if, do you want, oh, 